You know, from the outside looking in, it might seem all these guys are all cowboys out there getting their rocks off, but there are very strict rules in this game, particularly when it comes to refueling. When you refuel a car, you must be out of the car and the refuelers must have long sleeves and long trousers. If not, that's an instant disqualification. Well, the guys seem to take it on the chin. Dif uh, disappointing result when they've come so far, but that's what can happen. Owens is charging, the defending champion. We're now into the final section here, but it's going to get muddy down the road, right? Yeah, there's lots of bog holes on this track. You have, we haven't seen them, but they're there. Every little boy's dream we're about to get into, where you're allowed to get dirty and hell, it's even encouraged. Owens, the defending champ, is just looking so good for another win. Yep, he's charging hard. What is it about this guy? Why is he so good? Oh, I guess it just drives hard, keeps the car on the track and gets it there. Got good gear too, obviously. Got good gear. The main thing is you've got to nurse the car and clog the car at the same time. If that, that's, <laughs> that sounds a lot easier than it would be in practice, I would think. Wrench just going by the current Australian champion. There is Hayden Bentley, the double one eight. Hayden Bentley sounds like he should be driving limousines rather than these yeah, things. Yeah, true. Very posh sounding name, but he's on the gas hard. Jeff Rowe sounds like he's out of Nashville, Tennessee. This man going hard with Liz. Very narrow tracks there. Mm. This section really testing them. You're basically heading back from where you came, just like you did in the first section, right? That's right, except it's 170 kilometres out. Now they're running the same 170 kilometres back again. Be very hard to try and remember anything about the course heading back. It would all look different in the other direction, Change, I would think. Changes the whole concept, yes. Well, the boys are gonna, and girls are going to have to charge hard now for the last section. It's a long section at that. But if you're going to win the 2005 Griffith 500, you're going to have to charge hard. Copeland blasting away this track copping a real hammering now lots of corrugation from plenty of braking bumps and stuff like that you notice the guys don't exactly hesitate coming in a couple of Coleman's out there you were saying yeah father and son the father drives a four-wheel drive and the son drives his two-wheel drive truck well here comes Copeland the Copeland earth movers number 901 he'd be used to a bit of rough territory you gotta love this cheap yeah. the 801 of Colin Hunter and Bronwyn Humphrey now we're getting to the mud. Oh, you got to love this. Yep. Owen, didn't take long, in and out. Straight into the mud and straight back into the dust. So back into the uh, the traction side of things. Here is the 455 truck. Beautifully turned out. Matthew Coleman and Lee Slorak. Here we come. More mud. Oh, we go, oh look, at, look that. at that. Fellows, it all drained off pretty well. I wonder is the, uh, the idea just to charge in and charge out or take your time getting in? Well, it doesn't matter what you do. You'll get mud in your face no matter how you do it. 301 out there at the moment. Peter Barnes, Peter and Sam Barnes. Now, here's the Aussie champ. Got more of a sort of a diagonal shock setting on the front yeah. of these cars. Some of the buggies on us, they have the uprights. That's right. Yeah, they're designed different. Jeff's even had time to give his car a wash. Now, here comes Jeff. Oh, Rowe got through there beautifully. Yep. Now, we haven't seen this car before, the Transvent. That's the Denham's car. It's a safari car. Warren and Michael Denham, as you pointed out. Now, here comes Copeland. Oh, oh Copeland! Big jump, yeah. He nearly stepped the thing over. That was a handstand in the mud. I hope we get another look at that. That thing was almost but flipped over. How is this guy going to handle the mud? That'll be the biggest question. Yeah, he'll get through it all right. Jeff's no fool. Look at this. From mud to, to dust. dust. Ball dust. And everything in between. I bet there's a bit of that after the race too. Yeah, a lot of ball, yeah. Here we go. On board now with Pickering and Watson when they come towards the mud. We'll get a good look at that. Navigator says, come on, let's keep going. Through the middle. Glenn Watson. Here is Coleman in the truck. Through nicely. Fills them in, but they keep going. I'd say that the map has got plastic covering or something. <laughs> Look at this. Very hard to see through the windscreen. Very dirty. That would be the biggest problem with running uh, windscreen cars, being able to see through the dirt and the mud that, co that congeals on there. Well, at least in a windscreen car, you can wipe it off with the wipers. These poor blokes in the buggies have got to do what they can with their hands. Anderson in the Look 129. That. Splatter. Straight through. That's the 108 car, in fact, going through. Danny Oric and Brian Shearn. Well... It's the perils of running a, uh, a buggy, I guess, is what you've got to cope yeah. with. At least it's constantly ventilated. Well, that's true. The 253, oh, here we go. Look at the mud, they're oh. wiped out. <laughs> out come the rag, try and clear where you're going. Yeah, modern technology, just get the hanky. Out you go, yeah. the 204. Mud everywhere. Look oh, at that. oh no. he's bogged. He's bogged. 
This is trouble here. Where on earth is Burnsy going to go now? Quick, get a car in there. Quick, get something to pull him out or something. You have that obviously on standby, do you? Yeah, we had a tractor waiting there just in case and a couple of four-wheel drives. Well, that's good stuff. They, He's how out quick they do that? Away he goes. Yeah. Good stuff. He managed to get out of it. 4.96. I think he's going to be staying in Pukie Hollow forever. Tony Burns and Chris Smith. They're let loose again. Just shows you how easy you can get stuck. That's right. Here comes the Ford Ute. Now, what are we going to do here? Very cautious. Sneaking around the outside. Done well. Well, didn't really miss it, did he? No, he's got through all right. That's the main thing he's through. Look at the other one. He's bouncing through. That's Andy Brown from ARB. Ah, Mr. ARB in the Rodeo. Yeah. Oh, that's him. oh, that oh didn't no, get he didn't get through. He stalled her. We promised you a slow-mo replay of Copeland. This man is in his 60s, believe it or not, and how hard does he charge? Boom! Now watch this, right up on the front wheels. Even the old uh, balaclava uh, neck jumped right up over the front of the helmet, just then the curtain below the helmet. It is tough stuff indeed. Snow just going by there in the 35.71 Ian Snow. And finally, the buggy gets free. Yep. Look at the dusty conditions. You've got just about everything out here. 166, Stephen Jones and Raquel Jones. Now the Porsche. How does the Porsche handle the mud? Straight through. Oh, this thing does it all. Does it well. I was really hoping the Porsche might get stuck, I have to tell you. <laughs> and it did. It just drove right through. Well done indeed. The 129 blasting through Justin Anderson along with Shannon Hall and Johnny Rieschel. And there is the defending champ on his way to possible back-to-back -back victories. Owens is on fire. Checkered flag is out for him. Back to the 802 now. Dougie Coleman and Greg Malseed. This guy's running very hard in the Chevy powered entry. At least it's got the Chevy emblem down the side. Nothing is ever what it seems in off-road competition, is it? That's right. Here comes a couple more of our buggies. It's Wrench. So the current Australian champion gets some air. Coleman limping home by the looks of things here. Very tough to send whether you're on the gas or whether they're just trying to conserve the uh, the entry and get through. I think everybody's happy to see the checkered flag, including us. Well done, every team that completed the Griffith 500. Glenn, congratulations. Uh, Griffith 500 winner for round five of the Australian Series 2005. Mate, it's about time. It's been 12 months since the last win. Oh, look, we had a real clean run coming home. All we had to do was sort of keep out in front and keep our time, and we had a, had a really good run home. How's the car handled this weekend? Oh, we could go again. Let's turn around and go back. Like hell. <laughs> and will you be back? Oh, bring it on. Can't wait for next year. Describe that, that final run from a navigator's perspective. Fairly safe. We just played conservative. We had the, the time on the board, so we just wanted to get to the finish line safely. And uh, like we did, the cars and hardly got a scratch on it, apart from a bit of mud and a few rock damage. But getting home is the main thing. Shannon, congratulations. You came home really strong after a dodgy start to the weekend. Yeah, that prologue really cost us in the end, but we stuck at it and come in second. So, no, it's been an unreal weekend. Trevor, congratulations. Class 9 winner and third overall. Who needs a navigator? Yeah, that's correct, mate. No, I just had a lot of good luck on the way home, mate. Thanks very much, Jeff. Jeff, congratulations. Class 2 winner and fourth overall. Fantastic. That's what we wanted. But that trouble-free run we were talking about, the old motor, I think she expired this time. So, <laughs> What was the run home like? Um, rough, dusty, but it was fun. It was very, very fast and a lot of fun. Matthew, congratulations. Uh, class 4 winner and uh, fifth overall. Got to be happy with that. Yeah, real happy, mate. How was the weekend for you? Uh, yeah, not too bad. Had a few dramas yesterday. Hit a couple of trees but and uh, had a few power steering problems, but got them all sorted out and, yeah, finished well today. Colin, congratulations. Class 8 winner and sixth overall. Yep, we were surprised about the sixth overall, but uh, what a good run. We enjoyed it. Peter, congratulations. Class 3 winner and tenth overall. Great result. Had pressure on today, though, with uh, Dean Williams was uh, chasing me. They restarted him down at Stackpole in... Uh, on the road uh, and in outright position so that put him behind me again and uh, I had to go like a cut cat. Jeff congratulations class seven winner for the weekend. Thank you thanks very much. How was it for you? Yeah good it was a great race very tough very hard but a really good race really enjoyed it. Les congratulations on another fantastic uh, round five of the Australian off-road championships in Griffith. Yes Andrew I think it's all gone very well today yeah. How would you uh, rate the success? Well we got a lot of cars home and that's a real good thing because a lot of races you don't the track was good I think everybody enjoyed themselves. Uh, we had a few dramas, which is pretty natural off-road racing, a few rollovers and a few trees. But uh, I think everybody's happy, yeah. Well, congratulations, Les, on a fantastic weekend. Thanks, Andrew. 
So let's take a look at your top ten. Glenny Owen, they should call him still going. Glenny Owen. Ranch gets second. Copeland third. Jeff Rowe, Matty Coleman, Hayden Bentley, Colin Hunter, Tony Dawn, Brian Murphy, and Reg Owen rounds out the top ten. The Champers is flowing. Man, these guys and girls are tough. Well done to Glenn Owen. Yeah, that wraps up our coverage of the awesome Griffith 500. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't go away. Coming up after the break, we head to Winton. It's the YMF Loans Australian Superbike Championship action.